Last Sunday, we went back to 2003 and saw how a mysterious infectious disease broke out and became a full-blown crisis in Taiwan. Today, in part two of our special report on SARS, we learn how experts and policymakers coped with this grave public health challenge. As SARS spread from one hospital to the next, Taiwan began testing an arsenal of strategies, such as creating an epidemic command center and a designated SARS hospital. Through trial and error, Taiwan eventually came to grips with SARS, learning policy lessons that informed its approach to the novel coronavirus 17 years later. We look back in our Sunday special report. By the end of April 2003, Taipei's Heping Hospital and Renji Hospital were both grappling with the SARS outbreak under lockdown. Several healthcare workers became infected, prompting then Premier Yu Xiquin to turn to former health director and medical professional Li Mingliang for help. Li was asked to take charge of a disease prevention command center that would coordinate central and local efforts. At the time, I had only one request for Premier Yo. I said, I want there to be just one system, one person who talks, one commander. I said, if you want two, then get the other person to do it. I'm out. What I meant was I wanted Taipei City to follow orders. If their policies differed from the command center's policies, then they had to be the one to change. All decisions had to be made based on the interests of the group, and the interests of the group had to be based on the policies of the WHO. At the time, the central government's health ministry and Taipei City government's Department of Health were locked in major disagreements. The communication was poor. After the return of former health chief Li Mingliang, that problem largely went away, particularly because of his character and prestige. For someone like him, it was easier to coordinate professionals at facilities including the seven major medical centers and health and sanitation research institutions. But immediately upon taking the post, Li was faced with one piece of bad news after another. The WHO hit Taipei with a travel advisory. The American Institute in Taiwan announced plans to evacuate its staff. So out of order, just the U.S. sent a team to investigate our situation. The team determined that the situation was out of order, out of control. After I took the position, they reached a decision on the Taiwan situation. The following day, AIT Director Douglas Paul came to see me and said the U.S. was going to withdraw from Taiwan. This bombshell hit hard. I asked him if the decision could be changed. He said the decision was made and there was nothing to be done. I said, do me a favor. Make it easier for us to deal with. Don't issue an announcement. Please just leave quietly. Soon afterward, Lee found himself too busy to follow up on the withdrawal of the U.S. staffers. After the crisis at Hoping Hospital was brought to an end, Lee found himself dealing with new problems. On May 10th, news emerged that at the Hua Chang public housing complex near Hoping Hospital, three people may have been infected with SARS. One of them had died. Fearing community spread, the government ordered that the 140 residents of the housing complex complete a two-week home quarantine. To prevent residents from leaving, military police were stationed at the complex. Lee ordered that violators be severely punished. When it rains, it pours. The following day, an outbreak was reported at the Kaohsiung branch of Chang'an Memorial Hospital. Kaohsiung Chang'an Yuan Xiaowu, too, had many people carrying large bags of food to the hospital. The source of the outbreak was found to be an elderly woman who was previously treated at Renji Hospital. Li 老太太或家人没有跟医师讲说她是从来 Neither Ms. Li nor her family told the doctors that she had been transferred from Renji Hospital. So basically, none of the doctors took measures to protect themselves when they were intubating her or when they were performing a bronchoscopy on her. 
When she coughed, a huge amount of water droplets was expelled. They sprayed onto the doctor's face and on the face of the nurses standing next to her. All of them became infected. Roughly three or four days later, they began to experience fevers. The SARS epidemic in Taiwan exploded and one hospital after another fell victim. Acting preemptively, National Taiwan University Hospital announced on May 12th that it would close its emergency room for 14 days. We shut down the emergency room because several of our medical staff had fevers. Then we received a report that the emergency room door handles, the door surfaces, desks, all had the virus on them. Well, I could not close it down. I was ready to shut the doors and I reported my plan to Li Mingliang. He said I shouldn't do it. I said I could not do it. My medical staff, I couldn't let them lose their lives. I had a responsibility. I absolutely had to shut it down. NTU Hospital is our spiritual signpost. It's the highest level hospital, the last line of defense. If you close it down, see things from my position. People will think the capital has already fallen. I asked if there was a way to extend or to delay. I told him I knew the hospital was already at capacity. We were fairly unhappy about the whole thing. NTU Hospital had only 3% of the nation's medical manpower, but it was handling 40% of the nation's SARS cases. The medical burden on the hospital was disproportionate, and the people inside were at a significantly increased risk of infection. After the closure of the emergency room, its administrators began making plans to lock down the entire hospital. I had a comprehensive plan for the lockdown, including which department would handle what. Human resources, supplies, finances. I had it all worked out. Later on, I went to speak with Health Department Director General Tu Xingzhe. I said I'm getting ready to lock down the hospital. You should issue the order for all hospitals nationwide to prepare to do the same. But in the end, Taiwan's hospitals did not go down that road. We had to have a designated SARS hospital, one where confirmed cases could go for the treatment. So we coordinated with the Ministry of National Defense and arranged to use that Songshan Hospital as a designated SARS facility, one that's dedicated entirely to the care of SARS patients. In mid-May, Taiwan saw the resignations of its two health officials leading the fight against SARS, Health Department Director General Tu and Centers for Disease Control Chief Chen Zaijing. They were replaced by Chen Jianren of the National Science Council and Su Yiren of the National Health Research Institutes. In times of turmoil, it's natural to see talented people emerge. The public gradually came to recognize the contributions of Chen Jianren as well as Su Yiren. Through the combined efforts of the government, medical professionals and private citizens, Taiwan's daily SARS count began to go down from mid-May. The WHO has decided that travel advisory against Taiwan is being lifted with immediate effect. On June 17th, the WHO lifted its travel advisory on Taiwan. For the central government, the next step was getting off the WHO's list of SARS-affected areas. That required getting through 20 days in a row without any new cases or exported cases. And so the count began. A setback emerged when Germany, Canada and Brazil reported to the WHO that they had suspected SARS cases originating from Taiwan. Following a battery of tests, Germany and Canada retracted the report, leaving only Brazil's case pending. That case involved an elderly Taiwanese woman who had developed a fever and was being observed under isolation. They didn't do any tests. They just reported to the WHO that this was a SARS patient from Taiwan. I made a call to Brazilian friends who called the case a national secret and declined to engage in any communication about it. 
The woman was forcibly held in a hospital. The idea was that if she didn't die after several weeks, then they would know it's not SARS. Luckily, things worked out. It wasn't SARS. And in the end, Brazil was forced to apologize. Today, uh, the World Health Organization is removing Taiwan, China, from its list of areas of recent local transmission of SARS. At last, Taiwan had emerged from its months-long crisis. Lee describes the SARS outbreak as a northwesterly rainstorm. When it strikes, it falls fast and urgently. Try as you may, you cannot hide from it. I think we overestimated ourselves. It's such a tiny virus, invisible even to a microscope. You need an electron microscope to see it. This thing that is completely invisible hit us so hard, it knocked us to the ground. That year, I truly felt that humans, and especially those of us in the medical field, need to have a humble heart. We don't understand everything and we can't do everything. The environment can destroy us at any moment. Taiwan's war on SARS came to a pause. By the end, the disease had infected 346 people and killed 73, 11 of whom were healthcare workers. <laughs> 